Hi guys, David here with another science update. So today I want to talk about a paper which is honestly one of the most amazing things I've read in quite a while. The paper is called Visual Percepts Evoked with an Intracortical 96 Channel Microelectrode Array Inserted in Human Occipital Cortex. And we'll break down what that means and we'll talk through some of the key results of the paper, but I should say that the paper is by researchers from Spain, the Netherlands, and the US. And the background is that it says a long held dream of scientists is to transfer information directly to the visual cortex of blind individuals, thereby restoring a rudimentary form of sight. However, no clinically available cortical visual pr prosthetic yet exists. Their main conclusion was that they basically found that this was a safe and efficacious way to restore some degree of visual acuity in someone who is completely blind. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the key results of the paper, see if we can understand it in a little bit more depth to get a better sense of what the future trajectory of this technology could be. So the basic idea of what they're doing here can be seen in figure one, where you can see that they have this electrode microarray. And you can see for a sense of the size of it, you can see in this little, um, you can see a fingernail and you can see that the microarray is actually smaller than a human fingernail. But if you zoom in, it actually consists of many individual electrodes, which are basically this whole thing is interfaced with the human brain. So they do this surgically. They basically put this um, electrode microarray that has a wire set of wire bundles and they actually surgically implant it. The reason they're putting it kind of in the back of the head is because the visual cortex is essentially in the rear of the brain. So they're, they're basically putting the electrode microarray right in the back of the brain where it can interface with the part of the brain that interacts with and interprets uh, visual signals. So once they had a way to electronically interact with a part of the brain that interprets visual signals, they embarked on the first phase of the study, which was basically a training phase. They wanted to get a sense of how it is that electrical signals applied to the microarray would result in a, a sense perception, in a, in a sense of visual perception in the patient. And so the first thing that they needed to do was establish that an electrical signal would be interpreted as what's called a phosphine by the patient. And a phosphine, according to Google, are the luminous floating stars, zigzags, swirls, spirals, squiggles, and other shapes that you see when closing your eyes tight and pressing them with your fingers. So if you kind of like rub your eyes or something, you're going to see something, right? Um, and basically these phenomena occur when the cells of the retina are stimulated by rubbing or after a forceful sneeze, cough, or a blow to the head. But basically it's like, it's like little lights, you know, that, that you see, you can see even when your eyes are closed. And it turns out that most people who are blind, even who are totally blind, have some sense of visual perception, even though they're not seeing, they can't see what's, what's out, the, out around in their surroundings. They, they still get those little like lights in, in their visual uh, per perception space. And those are called phosphenes. And the thing is apparently for people who are blind, usually those phosphenes are kind of random, but they found that by stimulating this microarray in the visual cortex, over time they were able to um, basically train the patient's brain to recognize and interpret the stimulation of the electrodes as phosphenes that, that could actually be seen. And so the randomness of the phosphenes basically was reduced and it started to be that it was correlated with the electrical si simulations. So where things start to get really interesting for me is that perhaps because of where in the, in the part of the brain in the visual cortex they actually put the microarray, um, it was found that the that stimulating these different electrodes always wound up um, generating a sense perception in just like a small portion of the total visual perception of of the uh, of the woman's brain. So, for instance, when they stimulated these these different microarrays, these different electrodes on the microarray, which are shown here on the right, uh, the wire bundles um, the, in this grid format, it was spread out in this kind of specific region. So it would be like if if you could see things, but you could only see things like in a small portion of your vision. But it's still, it's a star. And you can see that in figure seven, basically we're getting to some of the exciting parts of the paper, which is that what they did was they stimulated specific patterns on the microarrays, and then they had her basically draw what she was seeing. And so in figure C, she's, she's they, they stimulated four 
contiguous dots and she kind of clustered she managed to cluster several dots together so she was seeing basically that there were multiple phosphines and they were together in one spot in part d they basically drew a line on the electrode and she was able to draw a line in response in some cases there were you know maybe, maybe it wasn't exactly right but they they had two different intensities of stimulation and and, and she basically got that there was sort of a um, like a horizontal component at one intensity and then a vertical component in the other. In figure F, basically she's resolved the letter I. And figure G maybe is a little bit, maybe maybe that one wasn't correct. She kind of put this as an L, even though there's not really, it doesn't really look like an L in the pattern. And then in H, you can see that she correctly recognized this as an O. So that was basically the training phase. And so obviously this isn't really being able to see exactly because it's not like she's like looking around and seeing things and then that's being interpreted as electrical signals, which are then talking to her brain. It's more like they're just um, using a computer program to simulate the perception of certain shapes in her mind. But what you need to really actually be able to see is obviously you need some way, you need some device which will pick up light and then interpret that light in terms of electrical signals, which it will send to the, to the microarray, and then give a visual sense in, in, in the visual perception. And so what they did was they also had this, this the, the full form of the device actually includes a set of glasses that have a sensor on them or a video camera. So the input from the video camera is then passed through a software program, which basically will um, simplify it and represent it as stimulations to the electrode and then they wanted to see basically the full loop would be if she could start to use the camera on the glasses to distinguish shapes and recognize things that are out in the world and so for instance they had her one of the first tests they had her do was distinguish the border between a black stripe and on a white background and she was able to do that so going into more detail, the paper says the subject was able to locate the black-white border in all the tests. Then the subject was trained to discriminate the location of a large white square appearing randomly at either the left or right half of a 21-inch computer monitor. The subject was seated 50 centimeters directly in front of the monitor and quickly learned to perform head scanning to successfully local localize the white square. So she was actually turning her head to like look around and she could she could identify where the white square on a, on a black background was. We then presented a smaller white square randomly in one of the four possible locations, upper left and right and lower left and right, and she had to point out the location of the white square. The subject was able to correctly point to the white square 100% of the time, 150 trials across five days. And her reaction time decreased from about eight seconds for, for the first trials to about five seconds. So she was getting better at it over time. I think it was still kind of difficult. She probably had to sort of scan around, but she got better and better at finding the dot or, or the square. Furthermore, after the short training period, the subject reported that the task became easier to carry out. So they say in conclusion that the results from the study suggest that even a relatively simple cortical pr prosthetic based on microstimulation via arrays of these intracortical microelectrodes um, could basically allow the recognition of some letters and the localization of shapes. And so they say such a system could help to enhance safety and navigation and provide greater confidence for individuals with profound blindness in many environments. So it might be able to restore some degree of sight, not really like a, like a true sight that has all the colors and you know ability to read small words, but maybe enough that people who are totally blind could get more confidence in sort of moving around their environment. And I have to think that, you know, this is just a stepping stone that maybe they would be able to improve this over time. Maybe they could create systems that have many more electrodes. There are some safety concerns. So for instance, one of the things they were really looking at closely is that if you are stimulating the brain with electrical si signals like that, there's a chance that it could cause seizures. So um, that's something that they paid a lot of attention to during this study. And they looked like in this particular subject, like there wasn't any sign of impending seizures, so that was okay. But if they were to look to scale this out, they would have to really make sure that it was safe. And especially if they were adding more and more electrodes, that would be a concern. 
But like I said, this is probably one of the most exciting papers I've read in a long time. This is an amazing field. I didn't really know anything about this field, but this is not a totally unique paper. There's definitely a pretty well-developed body of literature on the subject of basically returning some level of sight to the blind. And I'm just so thankful that these that, that these uh, people are, are studying this. It's, it's amazing. Well, this has been another science update. If you enjoyed the video or found it useful in any way, please go ahead and like and subscribe, and I hope you'll join me again in the future soon.